Hello everyone, Positron taking a quick look at Volume, the new stealth game from Mike Bithel, you might know from Thomas Was Alone. I hesitate to give it the label of action or puzzle because it's a little bit of both. Um, a couple of disclaimers before I begin. One, this is a press copy provided to me by Mike Bithel. Thank you very much for giving me an opportunity to check it out, make a video. And two is, I've had a hell of a time recording this thing. Uh, it's definitely not the game. The game runs beautifully, but my recording is getting a couple of pauses now and then on the video. And I'm not sure why. I think I might have figured it out, but this is, you know, my third or fourth recording here, so I'm just going to go through with it. The audio should be fine regardless if it happens, but hopefully it won't. And I do want to start a new game here because I want to show off the story. I think it's pretty important. Um, yes. All right, so let's get started here. We're gonna take our first steps and we will get a little bit of a cutscene here. And thus we are dropped into the simulation, or otherwise known as the volume. Now there's going to be some exposition here, and I'm going to start playing the game while it's happening. I think it'll persist from level to level, but I'm not 100%. Okay, 14 files missing, 2 files corrupted, minor errors located in source code lines 711 and 2300. Hello, tutorial 1. Uh, of course. You don't mess around, though. And I will start explaining the mechanics uh, when there's not talking happening, basically. Of course. You don't mess around, though. Sorry. I'm being rude, aren't I? Not at all. Welcome to the volume. I represent the current high bar of Gisborne Industries training technology. Full volumetric projection in a 31 by 31 meter square. You've used a virtual training environment before, I assume. No, but uh, I'm excited to try. I I'm Rob, by the way. Hi, Rob. Alan. Alan? I can assure you that Artificial Life Solutions took great time and effort in focus testing my name. Alan was arrived upon after many months of market research. So the voice acting, I really like. I really like the dialogue. It's very lighthearted, very Thomas Was Alone-esque. Uh, some of the voice actors reprise their role. Andy Serkis also provides a voice. It's very, very nice. It's very casual, feels very natural. I can assure you that Artificial Life Solutions took great time and effort in focus testing my name. Alan was arrived upon after many months of market research. Alan's your buddy. You know Alan. Of course I know Alan. I love Alan. Etc. I get it. Okay, Alan. Let's do this. Do you like the color? Uh, beautiful. I'm capable of showing 16,000 colors. We can't have you shooting at drab enemies. Mm. You simulate weapons. Well, it wouldn't be much of a military training simulator if I didn't, Rob. These first few environments are focused on movement and evasion only. We'll get to the guns later. Awesome guns. No rush. We, uh, we won't actually be getting to the guns later. So, you've been watching me stealth around a little bit here. The objective of every level is to collect all of these crystals. Or diamonds or gems or whatever you want to call them. Once we do, the level uh, exit opens and we can go through. We are scored on time. There's a par time for everyone. And depending if we get a good enough time, uh, it'll show up on the leaderboard. Now you see a couple of negative ones there on the leaderboard. That's just a glitch. Um, I'm not sure if th this is the release build. Um, I know a lot of those have already been fixed. So um, I think some of that is already getting sorted out now. But for the most part, I actually have not seen many of those. And some of these times are incredible. I'm not quite sure how you get times that good. I haven't quite figured that out yet. 
You're picking this up fast. You've got previous experience, right? You've been a Gizmo employee for a while. You could say that. Well, the next environment focuses on beginner gunplay, but it looks like you might be beyond that. I'm experiencing temporary errors in my employee database. Standard guard training, right? Walking back and forth, keeping an eye on the family jewels. Yep. What else have you got? I tell you. Oh, we got caught. So, when you get caught, uh, you in fact die, and then you return to the nearest checkpoint. I'll let him continue talking. Oh, infiltration. Knew it. Probably Black Ops, Bond type stuff. Maybe that's why you're not in the database. Stealth. Pretty cool. Okay. Can do this. I'm applying a bit of simple AI to each guard. Enough for you to go up against. So, simulated stealth. Perfect. That's not perfect, but it should help you practice the skills you'll need for what comes next. So I'll talk more about the mechanics once uh, the dialogue catches up here. I do like that it persists level to level, though I do wish there was a way to just pause while it's happening. Practice the skills you'll need for what comes next. Thanks. Right, you don't want to talk about what comes next? Not really. I only know bits and pieces. Hundreds of volumes installed up and down the country. They say it's the biggest private military spend since devolution. Secretive. Like Bond. Architects, you're good. Which weaponry would you like simulated, sir? Uh, none for now. So, the basic premise is a very Robin Hood-esque story. It will be explained in the exposition pretty soon, but the general idea is that um, we are showing off these simulations to civilians in order for them to steal back things that have been taken from them by the Gisborne Industries. You'll see here I'm activating the toilets and the sinks. Uh, the sound that they make will attract guards. Now, we can also whistle at any time to attract guards, kind of like knocking on a wall you'll see in other stealth games. Next. Their cones of visions are very, uh, obviously displayed there. Um, that was actually a much better time than I had previously gotten, though now you can see, not nearly close enough for to hit the leaderboard. And this is where things start to get a little dicey, a lot of moving parts. If we duck behind these half walls, uh, the cones of vision will not spot us. However, if we stand up by them, they will, and we will get caught. When you get caught, uh, you'll see a timer start, and once that timer finishes, you'll get shot and instantly die. Uh, when you, that happens, oh, oh boy. Yeah, so you can see here, you'll go back to the nearest checkpoint. Uh, the checkpoint saves your time, saves all items collected, and it resets the guards. Now, one interesting quirk about this... Uh, I'm gonna die here again. Uh, one interesting quirk about this is the way it resets the guards um, kind of means that you can exploit it to an extent, because if you get caught and then hit a checkpoint, uh, you'll return to that checkpoint with your progress so far, sometimes skipping ahead in the level. Now, I'm not sure if that's intentional, and it's expected to be kind of a clever use of game mechanics in order to get faster times, or if it's just kind of an odd quirk based on the design of the game. Essentially what it does allow is that you can't ever get stuck. You can't ever get stuck in an infinite loop of getting caught, basically. But it does provide that kind of interesting quirk that lets you kind of cheat some areas. Um, you also notice the guards are dumb uh, by design. If you are not in their line of sight, they will not hear you. However, there are things that will cause noise other than sinks and such. So you do have to watch out for those. And those are usually very clearly marked. I think one of the big strengths of the game in the art style is not only does it look pretty slick, but it's extremely functional. Everything is very, very clearly labeled. It's very easy to see, um, you know, cones of vision and things like that. Is it realistic? Well, no, of course not. But in the sense of a simulation, um, it works out very, very well. This guy's gonna come on by. This is actually a pretty tight maneuver we have to do right here. Um, this guy comes up pretty fast. Alright, we'll duck behind here. We've only got a few gems left. 
you can start to see how the levels become a little more complex. Um, that being said, so far, a lot of the times you are given um, kind of a... Oh, jeez. Well, I'm going to get caught here, but this guy will shoot me and I'll respawn at that checkpoint. Pretty good example of kind of exploiting the system there. Um, as I was saying, yeah, so a lot of levels are very focused on one mechanic so far, at least in the early game, or, uh, you know, building on previous mechanics. Also, it's really nice that if you do fail, you instantly start over at a, uh, a location. All right, so this is teaching us the whistle. And those little tutorial boxes will sometimes also provide character exposition too, and we'll see that a little later. One thing important to note too is that guards will always return to the location where they um, where were originally stationed. So they'll go to where they heard the sound and then they will patrol back. This is a pretty good example of this coming up here too. Alright, so we'll let this guy go. We'll go down here. So he should come by me. I can sneak around the corner here. But now I kind of have to make a mad dash because he's going to start moving back there pretty soon. Yep, here he goes. So we got to kind of make it to a safe spot before he gets here. And we should be safe here. He goes to that side. We'll go over here. Again, as long as you are crouched up against the wall, Cones of Visions will not see you unless they have a direct line of sight. Another good example here will be you trigger these guys and then hide back here. And they will just barely miss me. Which gives me room to sneak out over this way. And snatch up these gems. Really nice. I actually got a better time that time around. That was uh, in circulation. Eh, not that far off from being on the leaderboard, actually. Welcome. Now, I actually don't know what the intended version of this is, but it shows off an interesting thing that you can lose guards around corners, too. Early in the game, it's very easy to do so, but later on, it becomes quite, quite a lot more difficult. All right, so he's gonna come back around here, and we'll just sneak on by. Not a clue we were ever there. Uh, I'm trying to remember how to do this one. I think I do this, and then uh, hang out back here, and I can sneak by. Yeah, there we go. This will teach you now that you can break patterns. What that means is, if I hang out here, let me distract one of these guards. So what's going to happen now is he's going to go back here in a minute. And when he does, he'll be in a different uh, place where he was before. So now there's an opening in this pattern for me to sneak on in. Now, I could probably make a run for it, but I'll take the safe route around. Obviously, there's some severe optimization that could be done here in terms of getting much better times. I'm certainly no master at stealth games. Now, we have some new panels in play. And again, this game does a really, really good job of kind of like dripping in. That was my, my controller disconnecting. <laughs> Having all sorts of trouble recording today. Um, the game does a really good job of dripping in new concepts and such. So these are sound panels. When we go over them, they make a sound. Very, very simple. So essentially it's a, a whistle or a faucet or something that you cannot control other than by just not walking over it. I'm actually going to trigger this one and sneak on back. That was actually extremely risky. I probably should have been caught there. Uh, what is this one? Ah, so this is some exposition. Uh, subject yesterday, date 4233. I think the year now is 2054, so this was quite some time ago. 
So I've mapped events from what I can tell a single agent, AT23612, nice, a Turing reference, fitting. Triggered a big spike, the one you saw. Looks like the problem was one of overlaps. Multiple agents spawn in single locations. Now usually you just see a crash at that point, or our own fail sites would have kicked in. For whatever reason, he, well, he befriended other agents. Together they managed to connect to the outside world for a matter of seconds. It was enough. They figured out how to project AI out of the confines of the program. AT23612 was stuck there, but they got two other seed AIs out. Now they're multiplying, hundreds of thousands of them, millions soon. I've locked down the servers they're running on. We need to work out what to do with these things. I just called one of them he, for God's sake. Well, it's not like we've got some rampant AI happening here. Now, as far as I know, guards will always take the shortest path. So you see, he won't go to the right there, he'll go to the left because it is a quicker route. And I think I have to sneak back here. I might be able to make that, but for the sake of safety, take it a little slow. Again, this will be a good example where the guard will take kind of the shortest path. Now those black blocks are just impassable blocks. They're not walls, but we can't walk over them. And I don't think guards can either. Uh, oh, I actually missed a gem? Oh, wow. Boy, that's going to kill my time. Yeah, I see that now. I wonder if I can even get back there. Might be able to sneak around this way? I can't. Oh no, I cannot. Um, he's going to shoot me. That's that's a bummer. Um, is there a way to do this now? That's a good question. So if he's going to catch me... Oh, no, he won't catch me there. But as soon as I hit this panel, he's going to, I think. But I might be able to make it to the checkpoint here, and I can. Did I, see I mean, you see that pulsing ring is actually showing me where the exit is. So this is actually a terrible, terrible time, because I missed that gem there. Oh, that's going to get me killed for sure. Here, you can just, you can just take me out. Try that again. Let's try this a little more stealthy-like. Yeah, again, I could probably make it around there, but I'll take the safe way instead, for the sake of this video. I definitely want to get through to the later levels and start showing off the, uh, the other mechanics. Uh, I can just actually run through here. I'll end the... that was a terrible, terrible time. Alright, so now we start getting... gadgets. And we get a lot more backstory here, too. So, I tried to access the employee database again. And it's not there. No. I'm very sorry. Why can't I find you in my records, Rob? Why can't I find any records? What are your memories before activating my mask? Oh. Oh dear. What? I... I reset you, Alan. But I've only just been installed! The applicant's arriving shortly, it'll be back-to-back -back shifts. Gisborne wants so many trains, I don't fully understand Alan, why. Alan, it's... It's May the 1st, 2054. Nine years? Nine years. Nine years since Gisborne used volumes just like you to train his men to take this country from his people. So, I'm not cutting edge. The database you're looking for hasn't existed for... Oh, I did interrupt the uh, dialogue there, but it'll continue here in a second. Getting a lot of the, the filler backstory of what is actually go going on now. you're looking for hasn't existed for about five years. I honestly hoped it would take you a bit longer to realize. I suspected something earlier when you didn't want a gun. All my simulations need guns. The applicants you trained made heavy use of them in the coup. I'm sorry. Rob, I... I activated the witness contingency the moment I began experiencing database issues. Witness contingency. Page 79, paragraph 3. In situations where user identity cannot be confirmed, the AI will broadcast an encrypted record of all events on Gisborne networks. The user nope, that didn't work out. Thought I could be really sneaky there. Not so much. The user's identity is protected in line with company policy. I'm sorry, Rob. I liked you. I hope Gisborne's forces treat you with as much leniency as they're allowed. 
You think those old channels are still open? I'm not broadcasting. Oh, you're broadcasting all right. But not to Gizbord. Right now, at this second, you are broadcasting across the net to all of England. They're watching everything we've done here. If it's public, he'll see it. His squads will be on their way. I imagine we have his attention. But... I imagine we have his attention. But I kept our location out of the feed. They'll have to search hundreds of forgotten volumes to find us. But... why? Why are you even here? Well, you've been using real-world locations for these simulations, right? Yes, associates of Gisborne, but in my database is training environments for guards, and I repurpose them for your theft. Ah, oh, yeah, I got myself caught there. Yes, associates of Gisborne, but in my database is training environments for guards, and I repurpose them for your theft simulations. Cross-reference those addresses with news reports in the last hour. Uh, oh. That fast, eh? People are copying you. They're stealing the possessions of Gisborne's allies just like you do. Hang on. This is intentional. Are you with me? We're going to show England how to take it all back. All of it will equalize Gisborne's little estates. I was purchased in full by Gisborne Industries. I am, however, programmed to follow the orders of the most senior person in the room, which technically is you. I must comply until the squads get here anyway. That'll do, for now. Let's carry on. So I wanted to let that dialogue finish. It's a pretty important dialogue. To uh, to summarize, essentially, uh, kind of doing a Robin Hood thing, except that what we're doing is, via these simulations, we're broadcasting to everybody. Um, instead of doing the stealing ourselves, we're teaching them how to do it. So this will show off another mechanic, and this will probably be the last mechanic I'll show off, just because uh, this video has gone on for quite a while. There is a lot more uh, to the game, but I don't want to show off all of it. There's 100 levels in the game, uh, pre-constructed. However, there's also an extremely elaborate out level editor, and I'll show off that a little bit before I end the video. Uh, as far as I can tell, you could essentially create any single one of these levels through the level editor uh, with fantastic results and there are already quite a few levels up um, how good they are compared to the handcrafted ones I'm not sure but very cool that there's such a robust level editor so the mechanic here is seeing these doors these kind of closets we can hide in uh, if we are spotted and try to hide in one though we will uh, be caught they will still shoot us through here so now I don't actually have to use the bugle there I can just oh geez I forgot about that though Right, I'm just gonna let him finish me off. I don't think I'm gonna get away here. But this is where you start seeing some of the mechanics come into play all at once, which is nice. All right, let's try this. Oh, he is gonna turn around that way though. I can re-whistle him whenever their, uh, I guess their little diamond is unfilled. They will be susceptible to those sorts of things. See if I can get him to go over there. There we go. Now, this one is a little tricky because, again, guards will always go back to the location that they originally came from. So we're essentially going to need an escape plan after we come out of here. What is this? All right, excerpt from My Kind of Guy article in Synergistic UK Magazine, 2014. He leans back, his boyish smile notching up something approaching gravity. I'm proud of where I'm from. I'm proud of my country. I'm not embarrassed by that. The answer strikes me as defensive. I, I push. But you are a man of the internet age. International. It's fun to travel. It's fun to spread your wings. But I want a home. England is one hell of a place with an incredible past. And I hope an even more incredible future. Now I'm thinking that's Gisborne that they're interviewing there. So let's see if I can trigger this guy. Distracted him. Not quite what I wanted to do. Oh, I'm gonna get caught here. Oh yeah, I'm dead. So I definitely need to do that a little better this time. In fact, I should probably be picking this up as soon as I can. Alright, so that distracted him again. I want to do it even again. 
Did work. See if I can get another one out there. Got him again. I'm gonna go a little further though. There we go. So now I should be able to get to this door. Hide. Oh, I missed one of the gems. But you can see that they will shoot me through the wall. That is that was extremely silly of me. So you can tell, I mean, this it certainly gets a little more complex. I'm gonna try that again. I think I'm gonna do the same kind of thing. I'll just keep distracting him. The uh, the beagle does have a cooldown, but it is pretty quick. All right, so I'll send him out that way. There we go. Now I actually got all the things this time. Oh. I'll continue to distract him. Out as far as, oh, I actually triggered a couple of them there. The problem is now I've got two of them distracted. All right, so I'm gonna hide in here. This is actually, this is a very, very slow time. This is certainly not precision play here, but he'll go by and I'll be able to exit. So I hope that gives a very good feel of the basics of the game. The par times are very, very uh, lenient. I mean, I made par there still with quite a few uh, seconds left. Let me show off the simulation editor quickly. We can do everything in here. Um, literally anything you see in the game, you can create aside from dialogue as far as I know. So I can create a floor. Cool thing is with every piece, uh, you can change the color of everything. You can change saturation, hue, you can color anything you want and the brightness. Um, very cool effects. Uh, we can build walls up to three high. Uh, we can place props. Um, like game logic, for example, if we want to. We can put uh, the level exits there. Um, checkpoints. Um, an alarm system, force fields. I mean, these are things that I haven't seen yet, even. And we can change the rotation of them. Again, the hue, the color. Uh, we can put NPCs down. Um, again, some of these NPCs I have not even seen yet, so I actually don't want to go through all of them, not to spoil it. It's also cool is we can put text boxes. So you can have those like tutorial boxes there if you want to, which is very nice. If you want to either tutorialize a uh, player through your level or something like that, uh, we can replace the player and his rotation. Uh, we can put light just for uh, you know atmospheric purposes. We can change the lighting of the area. Uh, we can change the camera. I'm not quite sure what that's for. Looks like that puts a, a lighting effect over the whole level if we want to. And uh, maybe even make it darker. And then we can name it and upload it and all that sort of things. And then if you go to uh, run simulation, you can see local, online, tons of things. And it looks like they can be, I'm not sure if that's a rating or yeah, it is a rating. So we can rate levels um, we can filter levels. And there's some staff picks by Mike Bithel or other, uh, other folks. Super fun loading bar map. Interesting. But yeah, so this is Volume. Uh, you can pick it up on Steam. It's out now. It's uh, $19.99, 20 bucks. I believe on the opening week sale, it's $17.99, so it's two bucks off for this week. Uh, I think it's really cool. Uh, I'm not really into stealth games typically, but I really like the mechanics of this. I really like, uh, it kind of eases everything in. Level design is really good. The story is very interesting, I found so far. The voice acting is good, the controls are good. Uh, maybe a little minimalistic for some people, but I dig it. I think it's pretty cool. So yeah, if you want to check it out, again, link in the description below. Thanks again to Mike Bithel for giving me a code to check it out myself. And hope you liked the video. If you did, click like. Helps out a lot. Hopefully this video has fewer issues than my previous ones. And subscribe if you want to see more. See you soon.